And uh, years later, he was working as an associate pastor, all right? And, and he was a single man, and he met a lady. And, and uh, you, know, the, you know, he fell in love, and she fell in love with him. But Ayer Stanfield had this conviction. And, and by the way, as, as, I, as I say this, I'm not, this is not a teaching on marriage and remarriage. And divorce. I'm telling you a story to make a point, okay? There's a lot of scriptures that a person needs to understand when, when, when you talk about that. There's a lot of stuff in the Word about marriage and divorce and all of those things. And so this is by no means a comprehensive study on that. I'm just telling you what one pastor, one individual believed. And he believed that he could not actually get remarried until his former spouse had passed away. And so, and so he was in love with this woman. And, and so that was his conviction. And it was a time of adversity for him because he really loved this woman. He wanted to get married. And so I, I heard him tell the story of how he was traveling from Dallas, Texas to Washington State on a journey in a car. And he said, I'm just going to leave the radio off. I'm just going to pray the whole way there and the whole way back. And God's going to show me exactly what I'm supposed to do about this because he absolutely had no idea what he should do. And so he prayed about it, and he just felt like, you know, God wants me to live according to my convictions. And so he came back and told this love lady he'd fallen in love with, I'm sorry, right now I cannot marry you. It's impossible for me to do that as a minister of the gospel. I've got to set a standard. I, I can't do this. And he said, not until something happens or my wife passes away. This is a true story. Don't mess with God's people. Hello. This is what happened. Two weeks later, he got the notice that his wife, ex-wife actually, because she had divorced him, was in a terrible car accident and passed away. Unbelievable, huh? And then he was free to go ahead, and the season of adversity ended. What are you saying, Pastor Bob? What I'm saying is that in a season of adversity, God's going to test you to see if you believe according to your convictions or whether you don't live according to your convictions. How many of you say, listen, I'm going to believe God and I'm going to live according to my convictions. Listen, at the end of David's life, David the psalmist and the harpist wrote these words. 2 Samuel chapter 2, 22 and verse 28. I love this. He said this, through the faithful you show yourself faithful. David was faithful. Amen. You know, he was faithful not to, uh, not to come against Saul to kill him. He was faithful not to touch the Lord as anointed. And let me tell you, in that season of adversity, God blessed him. Amen. That's, this is powerful, deep stuff today. I'm just telling you. Amen. Okay, let me give you the third question. How many of you still with me today? Amen. Number three, here's the third question. Will you keep your attitude right even in the midst of adversity? Part of the faithful heart of David was that he kept his attitude right even though he was suffering. I wish I could have that. I always had a good attitude. I don't always have a good attitude. Sometimes I need an attitude adjustment. Has anybody here ever needed an attitude adjustment? Come on. You know, David could have grown bitter. He could have gotten bitter, Right? He could have said, why, why do I have to be pursued by Saul like this, living in a cave, estranged from my family? David could have grown impatient, right? Sure he could have. You know, he could have said, the Lord has anointed me king, you know. Why don't I just go ahead and proclaim myself king right now? Why even wait for, fall, for anything to happen to Saul? David could have grown angry towards the Lord and said, if this is what it means to serve the Lord, man, then forget it. I'm going to go worship the Baals. I'll make the God of the Philistines my God. He could have said that. David could have decided to go ahead and seek his vengeance on Saul because everybody knew Saul was out to kill him, all right? And everybody knew that David was anointed king. And, 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 but David, during this time period, kept his attitude right. How many of you know it's important to keep your attitudes right? The most dangerous thing about adversity is not that which comes from the outside. How many of you are with me? It's not that which comes from the outside. It's that which comes from the inside. Because you see, on the outside, there's going to be relational conflict. On the outside, there's going to be sickness, loss, financial setbacks, traffic accidents, flat tires, houses that burn, doctor's reports that aren't good, hurricanes, tornadoes, wars, burglaries, divorce, abuse, unexpected pregnancies, dentists, hello. 
All those things have an inherent danger in the pain that goes with it. But I believe that the greatest danger to your soul is not that which is going on on the outside, my friend. It's what goes on on the inside of your life. God is more concerned about what's happening in you than what's happening to you. Come on. And the way to stay faithful is to order your inner life right. If I could make a hero today of somebody, I would. And that's Mr. Richard over here. <laughs> I mean, he just blessed us on Friday night in Celebrate Recovery. This man has went through a lot. And, uh, you know, he had a stroke, which disabled him on, on one side of his body. But, and you know, he could have got bitter. He could have got angry. He could have got, you know, he, he could be furious about this. But let me tell you something. He comes to celebrate recovery with a positive attitude. Saying, I'm going to live my life for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the end of that time, Jeff, Jeff who was there, he just said, I just got to say one thing to, to Richard. Richard, you're just blowing us away with that positive attitude. Let me tell you something. He's taking the inside of his life and he's ordering it aright it doesn't really matter what happens on the outside come on somebody if you don't order your inner life right here's what can happen you can grow jealous why do other people don't have, not have these problems than I do you can grow bitter living your life in anger and regret and long after the adversity is gone inside of you is that poison that will keep rising up. You can become an angry person lashing out at everyone and everything around you. You can become a depressed person turning that anger inward until you become numb to pain and withdrawal from those who love you. You can even become vengeful, taking vengeance on anyone and everyone who ever hurt you. You can become distrustful, constantly seeking to protect yourself. You can, come, you can give in to despair until your faith finally faints. Some have suffered adversity and they just decided, well, I'll just live for pleasure. I'll put all my morality aside and do whatever I want. Whatever feels good, that's what I'm going to do. And they attempt to justify that before God because their life was hard. But let me tell you something. The key to overcoming adversity is to order your inner life correctly because Jesus said these words in Matthew 5. He said, for out of the heart, out of the inside of you come evil thoughts and murders, adultery, sexual immorality, thefts, false testimony, slanders. These are the things that make a man unclean. It's in adversity, my friend, that your character is truly, truly tested. Let me give you one more scripture today before we close, all right? It's a scripture that has to do with Jesus. I love this scripture in Philippians chapter 2. It says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Can I tell you that there is nobody on the planet ever who suffered more adversity than the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unjustly, by the way. He, he, he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, a beaten, bruised, you could just make a list as long as your arm, betrayed by one of his own disciples. But Philippians tells us that he kept his attitude right. He kept his attitude right. And then so why it says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. <sighs> What, what was Jesus' attitude like? While they were nailing him to the cross, this is what he was saying. Saying, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. Take care of my mother. <laughs> Into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. Now here's the good part. Because his attitude was kept 100% completely right. The scripture says this, that God exalted him. You can study that passage in Philippians through yourself. And you'll see that if you keep your attitude right and adversity, my friend, promotion is coming. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor God will lift you up if you keep your attitude right. Amen. The same thing is true. What's true in Jesus' life is true in our life. 
our attitude should be like Jesus Christ. You say, well, what happened to Jesus? Because he kept his attitude right, was willing to suffer, become obedient, even unto death. This is what the scripture says. It says, Philippians 2, 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you that when you keep your attitude right, God will lift you up from where you are. He'll put you somewhere down. And I'm just telling you today that your attitude determines your altitude. Come on. Amen. Your attitude determines how far you go, how high you fly, and who you fly with. Come on. I say it's time we sit down in heavenly places with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. And put our attitudes in line with His. You say, well, what happened to David? Most despairing moment of David's life. And I'm going to close with this was the point when David and his men, by the way, these were men that just gathered themselves around him, the discontented, the debtors, the malcontents. David and his men returned to the little city of Ziklag where they had been living, only to discover that Ziklag had been burned. Everything that they had owned, all of their loot, all of their bounty, all of that had been stolen and taken. The wives of the men and the children of the men had been taken and they had been taken captive and all they found was an empty city that was completely burned to the ground. David's men began to despair. They talked about stoning David. I mean, look what our leader, look where he left us to. Look what happened. Look what happened. David's wives were taken as well. He was worried about them. He was concerned about them. But you know what David did? He kept his attitude right. Well, everybody else was crying, moaning, groaning, going through difficult times. The scripture says this, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. He said, you know something? I've got a faithful God. And I know my faithful God would never let me down. I'm going to trust him anyway. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to believe God anyway. I know I'm in a season of adversity, but this is just just a season. I'm not going to stay here forever because God's going to get me out of this somehow, some way. Something's going to happen and the Lord's going to Lord's going to bring me through this. He gathered his friends around him and he said, "Look, we're going after him." I'm sure that would have felt like, "Uh." Some of them said, we can't go. We're too, we're too in mourning. He said, that's okay. You stay here. God's going to help us. God's going to deliver us. They went after them. They chased them down. They got all their stuff back. They got their wives back. Come on. Amen. They got all their bounty back. They defeated their enemy. You want to know why? It's because David said, look, it don't matter what's happening to me on the outside. I'm going to keep my inside all right with the Lord. It doesn't matter how adverse the circumstances are. I'm going to trust the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to help me through this. Man, I had so much fun preaching that last. Can I preach that all again? Come Y'all know that when you do that, it's like saying sick him to a dog. Amen. You know what happened? When David kept his attitude right, if you're reading through, reading through it, he goes and he gets all the stuff back. The next chapter, guess what happens? Saul dies. The next chapter, David finds out about it. The next chapter... David is anointed king in Hebron. What I'm just telling you, my friend, is if you'll keep your attitude right, God will take you from a low place to a high place. God will take you from a place of little influence to a place of high influence. I'm just telling you that faithfulness is key. Will you receive the help that you need from your friends? There's friends around you that love you. They care about you. That help might come like Hey, get your attitude right. <laughs> a friend loves at all time. Better a wound from a friend. Amen. Keep your attitude right. Live according to the principles that you know are true. Putting God first. 
Amen. And then you'll, God will see you through. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much.